one of my um, biggest uh, deterrents, I guess, as a teacher for um, using the game show templates or uh, any kind of templates is like that pressure of coming up with all of the questions that are going to be in our game. You can see this, who wants to be a millionaire? It's like really long. There's like 18 questions, I think. And I have to go type them in. I have to make sure all the answers are in the right place. All of that. It's a lot of work for me, the teacher, um, for, you know, maybe not a lot of output. So my idea um, that I think really it steps up the game um, for the students and their learning is to have the students help you create the game. And so my recommendation um, to make this a pretty simple process is um, take that original template um, of any of the um, game show style templates that I um, shared with you go to file, make a copy of the entire presentation. And now I'm going to make a copy of this for each of my class periods. And I'm just so I don't lose it. I made a folder. So I already have first and second period done. Now I have one for third period. I'm going to select and save it. And so I'm making a separate game um, for each of my classes. Okay. So the great thing about using any of the Google apps is that collaboration piece. And so um, when I am ready to have a game created that we will eventually use in class, um, I'm going to share this entire slideshow. We're all going to go to it. Um, all of the students in my classroom, and we're going to be working on this collaboratively together. So. Um, as you can see, as you go through it, there is a question slide and there is an answer slide for each of the questions. And so depending on how many questions are in a game, um, each of the games has something a little bit different. I'm going to divide up all of the questions among my students. So for example, the who wants to be a millionaire game, um, there's fewer questions and you probably have students in your class. And so I would assign um, students um, to work in pairs. And so I would have Amy and Jewel working on slide three to create the question on our topic. And then they will also add their answer on the very next slide. So Amy and Jewel are going to be responsible for slide three and four. Now you can see I went ahead and um, for my third period class, I would grab my roster. I would go ahead and assign the kids to their slides. You don't have to do that. You could just say, I need so-and-so to work on slide two, so-and-so slide three, slide four. Um, but I did find as a teacher that the students, for the most part, they were able to listen, but about 25% of the students probably um, would end up on the wrong slide. And then that's just, you know, another piece in class trying to sort all that out that, no, you're on this slide, you need to go do your work on the other side. Um, so I found that just pre-assigning all of my students to their individual slides beforehand saved me a lot of headache during class time. Okay, so now we're in class. I've pre-assigned um, my individual students or pairs or groups of students to the slide that they're going to work on. So my students are coming in. I'm telling them the topic um, that they're going to be creating a question about. Um, I probably want to tell them the depth of knowledge, um, what, what Bloom's level that question should be at, um, that goes along with our current learning objective. Okay, so the next step is to get all the students on to that same slideshow. Um, I mean, you can put the link into, um, into Canvas and have them cl click on it from there. So you would have one for first, second, third, all your class periods, and you could put the links and then they just click on their class link. Um, but I do like to keep my games maybe a little bit more protected since we are going to play them in class so they don't end up cheating or something. And so I'm going to go in. Um, well, first off, no, actually, we'll do this first. So I'm going to change the share settings. I'm going to do this like when third period comes in. I'm going to change it to make everybody who accesses it an editor. And then I'm going to use the QR extension. And it's going to generate an, a QR code for this page. And so the students can use their QR code extension reader that they have. They can click scan a QR code and then they can scan this off of my screen as I have it projected on my flat panel. Um, I mean, you could make a bit.ly for this too um, and do it any way you want. Um, just however you can quickly get all your students onto the same slideshow. Remember, you want them to all be set up as being 
editors, okay? Now, when we all finish editing, so everybody's finished editing, everybody's put their questions in. So, I mean, that shouldn't take too long if you divided up all the questions of maybe a 10 minute activity. Then I am going to go back to my share settings and I'm going to change it back and I'm gonna do viewer. Okay, so now third period has a complete game that they have created all together as a class. When it comes time to play, um, so like day two or sometime in the next week, you know, I'm going to not play third period's game with my third period class because they created it. I am going to probably use third period's game and I'm gonna let fourth period play it. So it'll be a brand new set of questions similar in content, of course, um, but a different set of questions created by a different group of kids. Um, and so I will have a unique game for each of my class periods created by one of my other class periods.